Hello, Glass Fusers. This is Lisa Vote. I'm going to share a new video with you. I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful dogwood flowers. I posted a picture of these online a couple weeks ago, and it was so popular. Everybody really loved it, and they were curious how they're made. And it's really very simple, a couple of different steps, but a lot of fun and a lot of different ways you can use these flowers. I'm working from a pattern because when I do detailed things and have stuff that is, you know, kind of intricate shapes, I like to work from a pattern because I get more consistent shapes with the glass and a better, more reliable fit when I put the project together. I've glued the paper down on the glass with a glue stick. Then I use my handheld cutter, go as close to the paper as I can, and then I use my pliers to remove the excess material. I don't always work with a paper pattern. But in this case, when I have, you know, a lot of shapes, similar shapes and a lot of pieces to cut, using the paper pattern kind of helps me uh, manage a project when there's a lot of pieces. It makes a nice visual because, you know, you can see yourself making progress as I'm cutting out these green leaves and these white flower petals. It's also a great way to minimize waste because when you're working with a paper pattern, you can butt those pieces of paper right up against each other so you have the minimum amount of glass wasted around the perimeter of the, of the shapes that you're cutting. Each flower has four petals and four leaves. Now you can make as many flowers as you like. Don't worry, you will easily find a use for them. You can put them you know, three-dimensionally on the outside of a project. You can put them on a corner of a bowl. Uh, at the end, I'm gonna show you how I use these flowers and give you some ideas and suggestions for different ways that you can use them. I selected a pretty wispy white for the flower petals and a wispy green for the leaves. And these to me are like dogwood flowers, but if you did them in different colors, maybe a pink or a red, or you know, they could be a different variety of flower and still be just as beautiful. Once the petals and the leaves are cut, I'm gonna take them to the grinder and buzz around the edge to fine tune the shape, make sure I have really nice pretty shapes, take off any sharp edges, and ensure that these uh, flowers have a nice consistent thickness so that when they're uh, fused, or I'm sorry, tack fused and then slumped, they'll have nice consistent texture. It'll be a nice durable project. I'm quickly going around the edge again to fine tune that shape because you really wanna do your best work. You know, you don't necessarily have to grind these, but they do look a lot cleaner and the finished artwork is a lot higher quality look and more professional look if you do that extra step of grinding. Now I'm gonna lay the flowers out on a kiln shelf. I lay out the four green petals first, then the four white petals on top. And I'm kind of bridging them. So this is gonna be tacked together. So the white pieces, the green pieces don't touch each other, but the white pieces bridging over the top connect them. Then I cut a little piece of yellow into a circle, put that in the middle as the center of the flower and to hide where those four petals come together because that's not necessarily a real attractive thing. So by hiding it, it kind of takes your uh, visually completes the flower for you. If you want four flowers, I suggest you make six because you're gonna definitely find use for them. And while you're in the process of making them, it's just as easy to make a few extra. And then you have them to maybe use on a different project or down the road, or even just to leave them in your studio like I do on the table, just to enjoy looking at them by themselves. Now I'm building these on top of a primed kiln shelf, and then I'm gonna transport this shelf and the flowers over to the kiln all at one time. Now you could assemble this on the shelf inside the kiln if you wanted to, but my, I'm more comfortable working on my work table because it's a good working height. I have good light there. I have, you know, uh, areas to lay the pieces of glass. So I've got plenty of room. So that just works for me. So if assembling inside the kiln works for you, that's great too. And if you have a smaller kiln, no problem. Just make three or four instead of, you know, the number I'm making here. If you have a bigger kiln, well then by all means, make more. I cut little squares out of yellow glass, a transparent yellow, and then I use my grosers to kind of nip them into coarse circles. And that's what I'm using for the center of the flower. Look how pretty that is. So we've got green, white, and yellow. Now we're gonna put these in the kiln, take this to a tack fused temperature so they don't shrink up. I retain the texture, but the glass has been heated enough where the pieces stick together and it's a nice durable firing. And look at the pretty shape there and how the flower petals have a little bit of a contour to them. Isn't that pretty? These are so fun, fast, and easy to make. You're gonna be addicted as soon as you cut some of these out. After the flowers are tacked together, 
I'm going to place them in small five inch bowls, take them to a slumping temperature and give them a shape and a contour. So they're kind of like little cups. Look how cute these are. Oh my goodness. These are just so fun. So beautiful. So delicate. Just wonderful. Really fun project. So there's a ton of ways you can use these. You can put them on a lantern like I've done. You could put them on a tree uh, trunk. You could put them on the corner of a lily pad shaped leaf bowl. You could, you know, do a, put them on the wall. A whole bunch of different ideas for these things. Now here's my firing guides. This is the guide that I use to tack the glass pieces together. Here's the guide I use to slump the pieces into the little bowl shaped molds. Now those are five inch ceramic bowl molds that I slump the little glass flowers into. If you ever need information on firing guides, you can find a whole variety of firing guides that I use on my website on a free category called Free Tech Docs. I know you're fired up and ready to make flowers of your own, so head over to my website, lisajvote.com, for your free dogwood pattern. I have so many ideas of different ways to use this flower in my mind, but I wanted to share with you how I used it. I made this lantern out of clear glass and then made a bunch of flowers and the, the clear glass to me reminded me of a trellis. So then I added the flowers to the outside by gluing them onto the tacked glass that creates that lantern. And this lantern, the directions and all the, you know, everything on how to do it is available in my video, Luminescence, which is available on my website. If you enjoyed this video and learning how to make these flowers, you can learn how to make other projects on my website. I have a premium video subscription plan where you get um, detailed instructions, video instruction on how to make these projects, plus a pattern ebook with the pattern, the material list, um, tips and tricks for putting these pieces together, everything you need to make beautiful, professional quality pieces of art. What makes my video subscription different? My videos are artist design project oriented tutorials with step-by-step -step instructions you can trust to teach you how to create striking fused glass art. You get guided video instruction, plus a free ebook with project pattern, material list, color pictures, firing guides, and my pro tips, plus all access to my previously released videos. Subscribe to my premium annual plan and get your name up on the wall of flame in my studio. It's a beautiful place where you'll join lots of other enthusiastic glass fusers who are help keeping this art and craft alive. I want to thank these premium annual subscribers for encouraging me to continue my work to make more exciting videos for you to enjoy. I also want to thank my Basic Plus members. You guys are awesome. You're all so awesome. Thank you for your support. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I appreciate that you trust me and you come and that we're learning these things together. I'm having so much fun. I hope you are too. So visit my website and subscribe to my videos for all these exciting projects. It's great instruction, and you know, so we can keep moving forward and making beautiful art together. You'll also find video collections on my website, like advanced glass fusing, how to make sculptures, how to make sinks, lots of fun projects and techniques. And I also have eBooks. Here are some of my titles that you might enjoy. I have titles for all skill levels and all types of artwork, anything that you'd be interested in. So head on over there. I also have sassy mugs, cool t-shirts and eco-friendly totes that you are gonna love. And if you want to join the fun, be sure to use the hashtag, I love making fused glass. I'd like to thank these manufacturers for their support and for contributing to these videos so that I can contribute to you and make more videos, more exciting things for you to enjoy. So until next time, happy fusing.